Hey guys, what's up? This is Bass Rock. I'm um, just here in my bedroom. Um, this is where the magic happens. Um, right here next to my computer, this is actually where the magic happens. Um, so I'm back here with another tutorial. This, day, uh, this time I'm going to be doing either a three or four part tutorial on mix down and mastering. Um, just the whole shebang, you know, compression, EQing. Um, first off, I'm going to start by talking out about... Get over here. Waveform properties and harmonics. Um, so just the basic, um, just the basics of synthesis, and uh, this will really actually help you um, start mixing stuff down correctly. <clears throat> so we're going to start off with waveforms. So got a, little, a lot of different types of waveforms here. If you actually have a couple more than these, but this is what we're going to start with. Um, first off, you have a sine wave. So what a sine wave looks like is. It's, it's the simplest of the waveforms, and it's really just a fundamental frequency. So, say you have, you have your, you have a graph here, okay? You have your time axis, and you have frequency. Um, or I'm sorry, actually that's wrong. I'm confusing my shit. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry, you have frequency, and you have amplitude up here. And... Say you have a fundamental sound, let's say, I don't know if you can see this, 100 hertz down here. Now what a sine wave looks like, it's just this big fundamental sound right here, just at 100 hertz. That's why it's very, it sounds very thin because it's devoid of any harmonics. And what harmonics is, is they're, um, they're what give the, the wave its shape actually. So. Um, Let's say, you know, the second harmonic of 100 hertz, everything just doubles, is, you can't see this really here, it's kind of squished in here, 200. Um, and how you create these waves is, let's take, um, let's take a square wave, for example. I'll just jump to a square wave. Um, square wave takes every other harmonic, um, sorry, it's every third harmonic. Two, three, yeah, three. And then it's a third of the amplitude, so three is a number. So the third harmonic is 300 right here, and you see it's a third of the amplitude of the fundamental frequency, and that goes all the way up, and that gives it this, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it does all this stuff that shapes the wave, okay? And so bringing this back up, so you have, upside down, I'm sorry, you have the sine wave here, um, I skipped all, all the way over here to the square wave, um, the triangle wave, the sawtooth wave, because it looks like a sawtooth, and noise, essentially. Um, I'm not going to go into how everything shapes these waves. Um, what you should know as, starting from here, going over and over and over, these have more and more harmonics as they go along. As you, as you can see, I mean, this starts to look more and more like a square wave, eventually turns into a sawtooth wave. Sawtooth waves are very harmonically rich, and so you want to be careful when you're mixing those, especially when you get into lower notes, the harmonics start to run together and they sound muddy. So these would be best for lower notes, although you can also low pass these, and the harmonics will not add as much noise. Um, white noise, this is, um, there's, there's white noise and there's peak noise, those are the two most common. White noise is amplitude all across the frequency spectrum, and um, because we perceive higher frequencies to be louder, um, White noise sounds like there's more higher frequencies. However, um, pink noise is the same as um, diminishing amplitude as you get into higher frequencies, so it sounds more even. So I'm going to go into phase relationships. So phase, essentially, this is what this is what I was trying to get at actually. Um, so you have amplitude right here, and you have a time axis right here. Let's take a simple sine wave and draw it like this. Okay, here's a simple sine wave. Now the wavelength is a very important thing to remember. So this is one cycle of the wave, and the wavelength is how long it takes, is um, how, long, how long the wave is. And you can also, yeah, um, what am I trying to get at? Um, so how you actually find the wavelength is you take the frequency, so one kilohertz, and you divide it by the speed of, of sound in air, which is um, FPS, which is this equation right here, which equals around one foot. 
Oops, I drew on my pants. Great. And that Sharpie, that's not coming off. <laughs> but it equals about one foot. So, you know, about this long. So actually, it takes around this far. From, say this is the speaker cone right here. This is where the wave is going to be fully reproduced. And this is important because lower waves, lower frequencies equals longer wave. So, you know, a lower frequency, the speaker cone will be here, and you have to be this far out to reproduce the wave fully. That's why when you get a subwoofer in a car, you never fully uh, correctly hear the sound, just because of that. And so, going back to the phase here, we have what's called the phase relationship. Okay, this is, um, this is in, completely in phase. If there's two, say there's two waves right here, and they, you know, they look exactly like this, that is completely in phase. They will be reinforced and they will be louder. Now say you add another wave. We have what's called the 180 degrees out of phase. And that's this wave right here. Now what it does is essentially you have, uh, just draw some little lines here. Okay, you have these little tick marks here and these tick marks here. What it's doing is at each sample point in time, and this is where sample rate comes into play, it's taking a sample of where it is on the amplitude scale here. Okay, and that's where you get 24-bit, um, 16-bit. It gives it more steps to you know see what the um, you know see what the amplitude of the wave is. And this is you know this is this is positive and minus. So this is when the speaker cone is out. This is when the speaker cone is in. This is the movement of the speaker cone. When it's 100 degrees, and what it does is it averages these for you know all the waves happening at the same time essentially. And so. You know, if this is, you know, plus 5 and minus 5, it's going to average these, and these are going to equal 0. So there's going to be 0 sound coming out of here because the speaker code is not moving at all because it's averaging the movement. Okay? So we want everything to be in phase. So it, we don't even want 20 degrees out of phase. You know, this is, this right here, that midpoint, that's 180 degrees out of phase. You do not want that at all. That is bad news bears for you. Not even 20 degrees out of phase. If you can get everything in phase, that will be perfect. That concludes the first part of this tutorial, and tune in for the next part.